Hey everyone, it's Hudson Henry here for Um One Software with another perfect inspiration video for you. And I couldn't be more excited today than to showcase uh, a feature that I just love in the new Perfect Photo Suite 9 uh, by using some of the Alvor Desert images that I created with Matt Kloskowski and the Um One crew. The Alvor Desert is this spectacular area in southeastern Oregon, the base of Steens Mountain. It's an old giant dry playa, dry lake bed, and we had a great time out there and created some great images. Today, I really want to talk about how Perfect Photo Suite 9 has changed the way that I approach my workflow at the front end. In the past, I've always imported all of my files into Lightroom and gone through and created previews in the catalog, waited for that to happen before I could even determine which images I really want to work on. And Perfect Photo Suite 9 has this new feature called Fast Preview, and it has literally saved me a ton of time and changed the way I approach ingesting my images in my workflow, bringing them in and determining which ones I want to work on. So instead of explaining it any further, I think I'll just show you. What I've done here is I've created a folder called Alvor Desert on my desktop, and I've dumped all the raw files from my camera in there. I've just taken the memory cards and, and drug them, drug the files into this folder on my desktop. I'm going to show you how fast Fast Preview is, how revolutionary it is. We're going to open the Perfect Photo Suite 9, the standalone version, and here we are in the Browse module, and I'm going to click on you know, Desktop, which I have in my favorites, and there's that Alvor Desert folder with all of my raw files in it. We're going to double click on that, and there's my images which is actually pretty astounding that they're not loading the, the thumbnails. That's the first little clue something's new. I'm going to double click on the first one, and it's a picture of my buddy Rick's FJ. And I'm just going to hold the right key on my keyboard down. We have several hundred images in here. Let's just preview the Alvord and see how fast Fast Preview actually works. Wow. So you're basically running through as fast fast as I can hold the key down and there's no lag, there's no wait for, for the catalog to build previews, none of that. It's just quickly giving me a view of what I have in this folder. There's the whole trip. Boom. I, I'm here to tell you these are 36 megapixel Nikon D810 files. We just went through 316 of them and they were never loaded into On One's Perfect Photo Suite before. This is There's no catalog. What On One is doing here is it's pulling the small JPEGs that the camera creates to display your image on the back screen and it's using those in this fast preview mode to give you a full screen representation of your image and, and get an idea of whether it's in focus or whether it's poorly composed as this image obviously is. And instead of loading all these images into Lightroom where I used to just directly import from my memory cards and then waiting for Lightroom to build JPEG previews before you can even really see what's in these images, uh, which oftentimes, you know, with 316 images, you might as well walk away, make coffee, have a discussion with one of your studio mates, and, and come back to see what your images look like. Now, just drop them all in a folder on your desktop, open them in on one's perfect photo suite, run through and say, I don't like this image. And I can go through and click the dislike button here with the thumbs down. Or just like Lightroom, I can hit the X key. Uh, and I can say, you know, I don't know why I took these photos. Was it even me using the camera? I can run through, I can go into the grid mode and make those same kinds of decisions. I can select all these images. It's just flat, light, and boring. And I can click on the little thumbs down and select all of them as dislikes. I can run on up here and, and see a section of images that I, I probably unnecessarily bracketed. If I run here and I can use the E key just like I'm used to in Lightroom or I can double click on the image, I can say that's highly overexposed. And the X key puts this little thumb, oops, hits this little thumb dislike symbol, thumbs down in the Roger Ebert sort of uh, mentality. And I think, you know, the middle image is, or the brighter or the darker image is probably what I want. So I can run through and just hit the X, hit the X. Get rid of these images. So what do I do next? Am I going to work completely in On One's Perfect Photo Suite? Well, for many of you, the answer is yes. I mean, you can run into the enhanced mode with the images that you like and then finish them in perfect effects or portrait or black and white. For me, I still am using the power of, of Lightroom's raw processing engine and its metadata editor. And so what this is is an, a front 
end modification to my workflow. I'm going to go through and get rid of all the images I don't want to work on. And then I'm only going to take my selects into Lightroom in the first place and spend the time and energy on building preview files. And I can hear some of you asking, well, how are you going to do that? How are you going to take all these images that you've decided you don't want to ever deal with that you would just want to delete before ever bringing it into Lightroom? And I'm going to use the power of the filter panel here in Perfect Photo Suite 9's browse module. And I'm going to just turn that on right here. And I'm going to browse to only the images with a thumbs down. So these are the ones that we just identified. And I'm going to either click the first and then shift click the last or hit the command or control on the PC, but command on the Mac A. Or you can always run up and click edit, select all. You can see the, the command A shortcut there. And I'm going to hit delete. And I want to move 18 items to the trash. Boom. Now those images are gone. I'm going to turn off my filter pane. We're back to the whole set of images without those included. And, and that I'm going to go through each and every one of these images in the full screen view. Um, and I'm going to determine which ones I want to get rid of. I also might go through and star some. Those, those metadata changes, those stars will carry through into Lightroom and identify images that I really liked as I go along. So for right now, I'm going to shut down the video for a second, run through, do that with all these images, and then we'll talk a little bit about how we bring what's left over into Lightroom. And now I've gone ahead and done that, and I've really gotten rid of about two-thirds of my images that I don't even ever want to bring into Lightroom. I've moved from about 300 images to 83, you can see here, and they're really sort of the cream of the crop. I've marked some of them as blue because these are, are panoramic merger images, the individual parts that I'll merge later into, into a panoramic. Uh, and I've marked some of the images that I like better than others with stars. You can see I gave this image two stars to just remind myself once I get into Lightroom that, that those are special images. I might as well do that as I'm going through in detail. And you can see that quickly I've gone through here and identified the images that I want to work with and gotten rid of the rest. It's separating the wheat from the chaff here. And the next step that I'm going to do is go on over into Lightroom. And in this case, I'm in the library module of Lightroom. And in the left panel, I'm going to choose import. And I'm going to navigate over to where those files are. Now, in my case, it's the root drive, which is called R2. And that's because I use one of these new little Mac Pros that looks a little like R2. Uh, and I'm choosing users Hudson Henry desktop. Um, let's see, where is it? Desktop. And then we know that on the desktop is that folder Alvor Desert. That's where the images are. I want to copy those images and I tend to copy them in their original Nikon raw format. Um, and over on this side, I'm going to choose how those files are handled as they're copied into my library. And at this point, I'm going to build one-to-one -one previews and that'll build a full-sized 36 megapixel JPEG of my image so I can zoom in, really look at it in detail, and, and make more critical decisions about how I'm working with it. Um, I'm going to rename the files, and in this case I've created a, a template, which you can do by, by using this edit key here, and I've created a template that's year, month, date, custom text, shoot name, and then a, a four-digit number. So in this case if I put in D810, it tells me which camera I was using, and the shoot name is Alvord. I'm going to use 1 as the start number, and I'm going to apply this preset to all of the images. This is my D810 landscape preset, and what I've done in Lightroom is I've gone in and created a preset that just gives a tiny bit of clarity. It sets the, the lens corrections for automatic detection of the lens. It enables chromatic aberration correction and it chooses the D810 landscape profile. Um, and I can show you a little bit later in this, in this tutorial how I create one of those presets. And then I also have a metadata preset. And this metadata preset is for 2015, and it basically gives my copyright information. And at this point, it's not a bad idea to type Alvord Desert, uh, comma, gives you a separation in keyword, Oregon, um, that 
probably is enough right now to identify this shoot. I can go in and keyword in more detail later. And I'm going to choose that it's going into my Drobo, that's my big storage folder, into the Lightroom Library 2015 uh, folder. So it's in the 2015 folder of my Lightroom Library. And I'm going to rename, I'm going to put this in a subfolder called Alvord. That should do it. Now we're, we're, you can sort of preview where this is going. It's going to the 2015 folder in my Lightroom library into this new folder called Alvord. Actually, I'm going to call it Alvord Desert. And I'm going to just go ahead and click on Import. And you can see it's going in. It's copying. Whoops. Every now and then Lightroom's got this funny thing where it's, it's popping up with a second desktop window but here it is it's going through and it's copying each of these images and once it's got them all copied onto my Drobo drive it's gonna then go ahead and render one-to-one -one previews for each of these images so we're again just bringing in only the images we want and we have culled out all the ones we didn't want using fast preview and now we're doing the Lightroom thing where it goes ahead it copies it imports and then it's going to take a while while it builds one-to-one -one previews for each of these images and you get to take a coffee break. So I'll just pause the video right here and come back once it's done with doing that. Okay, and we're back. And during the break, Lightroom copied and imported all of our Keeper images. And then it took about 10 minutes and went through and rendered one-to-one -one previews for each of these files. And what that means is it built a JPEG in its catalog for the full 36 megapixel file. So that if we go in here and double click or, or hit E to view the loop view of this image and, and click into one to one, we can actually see, yes, everything is in focus. We're looking at an actual JPEG full size rendering of this file. I'm going to press the G key to go back to grid. And you can see as we scroll through here, it's kept my blue uh, metadata designation for each of the pieces of panoramic mergers where I, blue is what I always designate files where more than one make up the whole image. It's kept some of the star ratings that I've put in. So the metadata is transferred straight across and we can filter in Lightroom just like we did in On One's Perfect Photo Suite and just look at those two star images. And you can see that the metadata that uh, that I chose to import as part of the preset has, has, has done exactly like I told Lightroom. It's renamed the files under that date, camera, shoot, number format and it's entered all my copyright information and all that's set up in a, a metadata preset you can edit those presets and create new ones if you click in here you can just enter all your information save it as a preset you can see I save them by year I'm gonna go ahead and just cancel out of this uh, I'm gonna say done and do not save but you see how you create one of those. And I want to go ahead, go into the develop module and work with one of these raw files for a second. And you can see that that develop preset that we applied at import has been applied to the image. We've got camera landscape on the calibration, lens corrections are enabled, chromatic aberrations removed under our basic settings. We've got a little bit of clarity and a little bit of vibrance. And I just did that by choosing, when I brought the photo in, this intake preset. And with each new camera, I, I build new presets. As I get rid of old cameras, I get rid of them. Right now I've got one for a 5D Mark II. I've got several for the D810. I've got my favorite one for my Fuji X100S. And I just you know build those the same way you would build any other preset in Lightroom. Uh, topic for another day. But the first thing I would do here in the develop module is just play with my, my white balance a little bit, make sure that I've got the image looking like I remember that morning. I think it was just a little bit warmer than the camera chose. Uh, I'm going to go in here. Exposure looks pretty good to me. There's room to move it up, but but this image, it, it, I don't want to lose too much detail in the sky. Uh, I might boost it just a little bit. Uh, as far as contrast goes, I think it's got room for a little contrast looking at its histogram. We're not about to blow the shadows or the highlights, so I'm going to just pump it up a little bit, get a little more contrast, especially in this foreground. And then, you know, I generally work the sliders in Lightroom from top to bottom in the develop module, particularly in the basic panel, but I generally skip over highlights and shadows and do my whites and blacks first. 
and I generally hold down the option key as I move these sliders. That way you can see at what point you're blowing the highlights in the image. Now in this case I don't I don't want to get anywhere near blowing the highlights and the whites. Uh, I think it's actually pretty good as it started. Uh, I might actually check out what it looks like pulling them down a little bit. Yeah, I think somewhere it's it's adding a little bit of color to the sky. I think I'll stop somewhere right in there. With blacks, I generally want to pull them down right to the edge of where I'm losing detail, and you can see the cracks are going to start to just go pure black. In this case, I want to I want to get right to the edge of that happening, and right there, that's perfect. And then I'm going to go back and just play with highlights and shadows to taste. I'm just going to move those sliders and often. You know, do extreme movements, see where you like it, and then and then find your way. It's kind of like focusing the camera. Move these sliders around. Get the look you want. And, and, and sometimes the way to find that is by going to either extreme and then finding where the middle ground that you like is. So I'd say something just like that. And given the fact that I use On One's Perfect Photo Suite for finishing my images, I don't go into a lot of detail with clarity and vibrance, saturation, Sometimes I'll use the targeted adjustment tools. If you click on these little bullseye symbols here under hue, saturation, and luminance. Uh, in this case, I'm going to just darken the sky a little bit, this, this orangeness in the sky. I just want to darken that a little bit and darken sort of the blues up there just a little bit. It's just handy because you can grab a color and tweak just that color. But, you know, I'm not going to do anything extreme because I finished my images in the perfect photo suite. And the last thing I'll do is just a little bit of sharpening. And if I had noise in the image, I would do a little bit of noise reduction before I before I create a Photoshop document to work on. Uh, I'd rather do just a little sharpening and noise reduction on the raw file before that, that new document's created to edit in the perfect photo suite. So when I go in and I do my sharpening, I again, just like I did with white point and black point, I'm holding the option key, it would be the alt key on the PC. And as I move the, the sharpening slider, I'm going to go here at 100%, look at this image 100% close up, and I'm going to just move this slider around to get the level of sharpness that I want without over sharpening. Radius is going to show the size of the edge that's being sharpened, and you know if you, if you make it too extreme the image is going to get crunchy, it's not actually going to look good when you print. It's one of these things that it's a little bit of an art, you learn it as you go, and if you're a printmaker like I am, you'll find what works and what doesn't work quicker because you're going to see it more in the mm -hmm. print than you are in a uh, digital representation on a screen. But you can still get a pretty good idea here. Um, detail is sort of a balance between halo suppression and smart sharpening. You just pull it to taste. Again, holding down that option key and letting go of it gives you an idea of what's happening to the edges as you work on them. And then masking is a tricky uh, little slider. It's extremely important when you have noise in your images, especially when you have noise in the sky. What masking does is it tells it what, what level of detail to sharpen. So it's, it's going to mask things that are smooth, like the sky. So sometimes when you have noise in your sky, you don't want to be sharpening it. You can pull this masking slider until you can see the black parts not being sharpened. You're only really going to be sharpening those edges that are important to you. So this is a way to differentiate what's sharpened from what's not sharpened. And after, often after you play with these sliders a little bit, you're going to want to go back to the beginning and, and just look at sharpening one more time and make sure it's looking good. And then if there were noise in the image, I would play with the noise reduction slider. Uh, and then go back and resharpen a little bit. It's just a kind of a back and forth balancing game. And I often want to just turn this little panel off, turn off all the sharpening, and see we definitely got a higher level of detail, particularly when you're printing. Like I love to print. This makes a big difference, and it's good to do it on the raw file before you create a new file from it for further editing. It's just good to get that, that kind of introductory sharpening done here. So with that all done, I'm going to press the G key to go back into my grid view, back into the library. And then I'm going to right click the image or control click on the Mac. And I'm going to choose Edit In Perfect Effects 9. And that's going to open up a dialog for what kind of document I want to edit. I'm, I'm not going to edit the raw file in Perfect Effects. I'm going to choose a Photoshop document. 
in the Profoto RGB color space, that's the widest gamut color space possible, which is better for editing. You're less likely to clip colors. I want to keep that 16-bit deep bit depth um, and 300 resolutions just fine with me. I'm going to click go, and, it, and it's basically going to build a Photoshop document, open it in perfect effects, and let me do my finishing edits there. And we'll wait till that opens up. So here we are back in the Perfect Photo Suite. We're in Perfect Effects and we have our new file we've created with our with our raw edits from Lightroom. And the first filter that I generally go for is the Dynamic Contrast filter. Anybody who's watched my Perfect Inspirations knows that's my favorite starting filter for landscapes. And, and I generally start with the natural preset and then maybe pull the, the small level detail slider up to just add a little bit of extra detail in those those small details, those little tiny crevices and cracks in this particular case. And we can take a look at how that affected the image. Wow, we have added just a ton of micro contrast that makes this much more interesting image. I'm going to go ahead and add another filter here and I'm going to run into the color enhancer and I'm just curious about what fall color enhancer would do to the sky and these mountains and it really brings out the reds of that that dawn light that I remember and uh, I think it might be just a little extreme so I can pull the layer opacity down just a little bit kind of feather that effect in uh, and, and I think we're looking pretty darn good there's actually not a whole lot more I want to do to this particular image just boom boom there it is I might add one more empty filter layer here and just check the tone enhancer and see what auto contrast might do sometimes sometimes it adds a little something hmm I'm not so sure that it does in this case uh, let's see yeah it's a little a little too bright in the sky I think I would I would actually kind of like what it's doing in the foreground though so in that particular case I'm going to run here with my masking brush. I'm going to leave the opacity, well, I'm going to pull the opacity down to about 80%. Let, let's paint most of this out. I'm going to use the right bracket key to, key to increase the brush size here. And I'm using my Wacom tablet, my, my pressure sensitive tablet. It works great with the brushes in the Perfect Photo Suite. And it gives me a level of detail control and just a painterly feeling that I absolutely can't live without. Once you start using a Wacom tablet uh, in your photo editing, I, I don't think you'll be able to go back to not using one. Do, your, do yourself a favor and, and really try it out. So here I am just painting with my uh, stylus. And yeah, I really, really like what that's doing for the image. Now when I take a look at it, yeah, I like how it's brightened up the foreground without really losing any contrast. So there you have it. I think we're looking pretty good right there. And I think this image of the cracks here at dawn in the Alvord really just highlights how quickly and effectively you can get that punch, that, that vibrance, that pop, that contrast in your image. Uh, I used to spend a lot of time in Photoshop, you know, taking my raw files and getting this, this crisp level of detail that, that honestly I was sort of used to getting straight out of film. Now, obviously, we're getting a lot more resolution, a lot more enlargeability in our modern digital images than we were in 35 millimeter film. But you, you, in, if you're shooting in raw and you have that latitude for post production, you're not getting that crisp, that 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 contrasty, color rich level that you would with some with some JPEG cameras and with old film and yet we want that level of control that RAW gives us. It's a lot like the old black and white photographs where you're gonna work on it in the, in the darkroom to get what you want. Well now you can do that in color and for me the perfect photo suite and the perfect effects module in particular is the way for me to get that quickly easily and get exactly the look that I'm going for and get back out in the field shooting. It's saving me a ton of time and I love it. You can just see here, quick click shows where we started and it didn't look bad in Lightroom before we got here, but with just a few quick moves, wow, that has become an image that I'm super proud of. Um, it really captures just how impressive it is to sit in this big, huge playa and look at these really dramatic cracks stretching towards Steen's Mountain. Matt and I were just just awestruck this morning watching Dawn hit those mountains. So I will now hit apply and it's going to just apply the effect and then save that image and take it back into Lightroom. Uh, it 
it's actually generally pretty quick even with a big 36 megapixel file like this because we're working with a smart photo here in the perfect photo suite it actually is going to be completely re-editable. If I open it, I can redo any of the masks, I can redo any of the layers, and that's a great new feature in Perfect Photo Suite 9. And you see how nicely it integrates into Lightroom, where I like to keep track of my files and, and do that, that raw editing in its raw engine. It keeps its side card right next to the original file in what's known as a stack in Lightroom. It automatically creates that, and I can just see here there are two images, my original raw file, and my new PSD file that I've edited in Perfect Effects. So that pretty much concludes what I wanted to show you today. Um, I hope that you'll check out more of the training materials on the On One website. Some of our in the field um, videos are really fun. We've got one here working in the Alvord. There's going to be another where we showcase some of the star images that we shot out during the hours of darkness out there. And I'll show you some more of these images as they're edited in Lightroom and Perfect Effects. And I hope that you'll check back into my website and follow me on some social networks. I've got uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, 500 Pics, Flickr, Google+, and my email links are all here on my website at HudsonHenry.com. Hey, thanks everybody. I've had a blast. I hope you enjoyed it.